So the key to solving these three integrals is that we're going to use this identity over here. So if we integrate f of x multiplied by the direct delta function of x minus a dx, then this is going to be equal to f of a. And then we can easily prove this by using the this identity over here. So this identity is obviously true because when x is equal to a, so definitely uh, left-hand side is going to be equal to the right-hand side. And then when x is not equal to a, uh, both sides are just equal to 0. So, so the left-hand side is also going to be equal to the right-hand side. So this expression here is going to be true for all values of x. So we're going to use this expression to prove this formula over here. So if we start off with the left-hand side, we have f of x times the direct delta function of x minus a dx. And then we're going to apply this instead of f of x. I'm just going to switch out, switch it out and change it to f of a. So x minus a dx. And then f of a is just a constant. I can just pull this outside. So I can just put this outside of the integral. And then if you integrate the direct delta function, by definition, this is just going to be equal to 1. So in the end, this is just equal to f of a. And so this is how you prove this formula over here. And so now we're going to apply this formula. So for part a, we have the integral of negative 3 to positive 1 of this polynomial x to the power of 3 minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. And then you can see that for this case, all you have to do is just to apply this formula. In this case, you can see that the a is going to be equal to negative 2. So in order to evaluate this integral, all we have to do is substitute negative 2 into this expression over here. And then one thing you should note is that in our proof over here, the integral goes from negative infinity to, to positive infinity, while here the bounds go from negative 3 to positive 1. But it doesn't really matter as long as your a is inside uh, this range over here. So as long as it's inside this domain. So this is the domain goes from negative 3 to 1. And of course you can see that a is going to be, be inside negative 3 and 1. So in case you need a graphical representation. So of course our a, which is equal to negative 2, is inside this domain. So as long as this is true, then this uh, formula is going to, going to apply. So since we know that in this case our a is equal to negative 2, and negative 2 does lie between negative 3 and 1, we can now apply this formula. So this integral is just going to be equal to f of a, where f of x is just equal to this polynomial over here. So this is going to be equal to f of a, a f of a is equal to negative 2, and then our f of x is going to be equal to this. So all we have to do is substitute negative 2 into this polynomial. So we have negative 8, we have 4 times 3, that's negative 12, and then minus 4, minus 1. So this is just equal to negative 25. So this is the integral for part A. And then we do the same for part B. So let's just copy this out first. So we have cosine 3x plus 2 times the direct delta function of x minus pi dx. And then once again, we just apply this formula again. In this case, you can see that our a is equal to pi. And then, uh, as before, the bounds do not go from negative infinity to positive infinity, but it's still uh, this formula still applies because our a, which is equal to pi, does lie between 0 and infinity. So we can still use this formula over here. So it turns out that this integral is just going to be equal to f of pi, where f of x is going to be equal to this expression. So that's just equal to cosine 3 pi plus 2. And then cosine 3 pi is going to be equal to negative 1. So all you have to do is just to graph the cosine graph. So this point here is pi, and this point is 2 pi, and this point is 3 pi. So it goes from negative 1 to positive 1 and back down to negative 1. So cosine 3 pi is just equal to negative 1. So in the end you have 2 minus 1, so it's just equal to 1. So this is the value of the second integral. And then now we have this third integral over here. So it goes from negative 1 to positive 1. We have e to the power of the absolute value of x plus 3. And then it's multiplied by the direct delta function of x minus 2 dx. And then once again, we apply the same formula. And then you can see that this time our a is equal to 2. And then here you see that 2 does not lie between zero, uh, negative 1 and positive 1. So if we represent this graphically, 2 is going to lie outside of this domain, negative 1 to positive 1. So that means this formula does not apply. And so in the end, this whole thing is just going to be equal to 0.
So that is the value of this third interval.